News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk KGVO, AM 1290, and now 101.5 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. Ten dead, hundreds hospitalized because of flu in Montana. Good morning, everyone. It's Montana Morning. It's Monday, February 2nd. It's Groundhog's Day. We just learned Punxsutawney Phil saw his shadows, or so six more weeks of winter. Big surprise, right? Right right. Right now we have 24 degrees, a little fresh snow on the ground, and we do have a winter weather advisory until 9 o'clock this morning. We'll have that here in just a moment. Our newscast, sponsored by Kootenai Creek Village, the maintenance-free active adult community in Stevensville, called 777-5387. Well, the 2014 and 15 flu season has been taking its toll on Montanans as well as the rest of the country. Communications Director for the Montana Department of Health and Human Services, John Ebelt, told me on Friday that new numbers were released for Montana just before the weekend. We are at 395 hospitalizations and a total of 10 deaths. The deaths are primarily individuals over 65 years and older, so it's having a, a uh, more of an impact on the elderly. Ebel said one particular strain of the flu has been more virulent than others this season. Every year there's different strains of influenza that are circulating. This year the dominant strain is H3N2. And in previous years when that has been the dominant strain, that strain usually does cause more hospitalizations and more deaths. Ebel said all parts of Montana have been affected equally by the flu and that the vaccine is still the best way to stave off the virus. Missoula Public Health officials have told KGVO News in the past weeks that there have been no flu deaths reported in Missoula County. The tumbling value of Canada's currency as business owners and communities in northern Montana concerned. Plagued primarily by plummeting oil prices, the Canadian dollar reached its lowest value in six years recently. That means Canadians must spend more on American goods and services. The Flathead Beacon reports more than 913,000 Canadians visited Montana annually in recent years, collectively spending more than $275 million. Concerns about reduced Canadian spending cast a cloud over this past week's annual Flathead Valley Economic Forecast event at Flathead Valley Community College. Brad Eldridge is director of the Institutional Research Assessment and Planning at the college. He described the situation as one of the largest risks facing the local economy this year. Congressman Ryan Zinke is touting a new bill in the U.S. House of Representatives. It's called the Recreational Fishing and Hunting Heritage and Opportunities Act. What it does is it makes public lands open uh, until closed, and it restricts uh, when a public land can be closed. So it, it, it takes it to where an agency can't arbitrarily close roads, close access, and prevent hunting. Zinke says various federal bureaucracies have had a history of limiting hunting and fishing on public lands in Montana. We've seen some, some cases in Montana where whether it's BLM or, or Army Corps of Engineers where all of a sudden hunting is at risk. And I just want to make sure that you know, my sons and your children and Montana's you know, future generations have the same opportunity to hunt uh, and fish and use our public lands. As I did grow up. The bill has been referred to the Committee on Energy and Natural Resources. A trial is scheduled for this spring for a Billings couple charged with killing their 10 week old son and also injuring his twin sister. The Billings Gazette reports that District Judge Mary Jane Kenisley has set an April 20th trial date for Kayla Jean Edwards and Brandon Tory Edwards. Kayla Edwards is charged with deliberate homicide in the death of Tavares Michael Edwards and felony assault on a minor for injuries to her daughter. Her husband, Brandon, has been charged with two felony counts of aggravated assault and assault on a minor. The man shot and killed by police outside a hospital in Billings has been identified as 48-year-old John Barry Marshall. Yellowstone County Deputy Coroner Cliff Mahoney released the name Saturday. Marshall was a resident of Billings. He was killed Friday near the Billings Clinic by police trying to arrest him on a burglary warrant. Billings Police Chief Rich St. John says officers at the scene saw that Marshall had a gun and shot him when he appeared to try to shoot at them. The victims or the names of the officers involved have not yet been released. That incident remains under investigation.